All right, guys, in front of us, we have a Ryobi P737 18 volt uh, battery powered handheld air compressor. The point of this video is just to address why you're hearing a rattling sound inside of your air compressor and to address why you might be losing power. So to get started, you're going to need a, a small Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to need not necessarily small, but narrow. It has to be able to get inside of all of these little holes here to get the screws. There's going to be 10 of these holes, so remove all 10 screws set them aside in a bag or a tray and we will put those back in later once that is done you are now from the bottom i like to lay it first on its side obviously remove the battery and then lay it on this side not this side but this side and now you're going to slowly just pry this open and just be gentle because this thing is already cheap as it is and it's prone to breaking Okay, with this done, once we split it inside, the uh, connector for the battery terminals is either going to stay on one side or the other, so just pull that out. And then the uh, trigger with the switch, um, this is just being held on, if you can see that hole there, and there's a hole there. There's two studs built into the frame that's sticking through on those, so just pull that straight off. And then the trigger just comes right off, but it'll go back on that way later, and we'll deal with that later. So now with this taken care of, if you hear a rattling sound inside of your Ryobi air compressor, it is due to this right here more than likely. This is the fan. It's supposed to have blades sticking out and this is supposed to cool the unit when you are using it. Um, you're going to hear a lot of noise rattling around and it's because the fan blades get obliterated inside. So make sure to just shake those out. Just gently, you know, hold this in place, shake everything out, clear everything out of this side and you'll be all set. Uh, you might even find like a little stud from the frame broken inside. Again, it's cheap and uh, it's just going to happen. So let's just roll with the punches here. I found um, that after I fix these, the fan really isn't needed. I just don't overwork it. So, you know, if you're filling up a car tire, do one tire, give it a break for, you know, a couple minutes and then fill another tire. I will try to find a replacement blade. And if I do, I will put that in the link uh, description below and you can order one for yourself. And I'm sure that this just pops off with a pair of pliers and you can probably press another one back on in its place. But since this thing is so cheap and disposable, in my opinion, I'm not gonna bother. Let's get on to dealing with why it's losing power. All right, so why it's losing power uh, from what I found is that there's a lack of lubrication inside of here. So when the motor is turning, this is cycling like this there is a basically this is the piston in here and it's got rubber seals and o-rings in there and it's pushing air through here through a one-way check valve and um, i believe with the lack of lubrication air is just getting by uh, the seals and blowing back out this way and it's not all going through so we're going to take care of that now all right what we're going to need to do is remove this e-clip here at the top and to point more precisely, it's this thing right here that spins around. And what I'm gonna use for that is a small pick. You can use like a reamer on a Swiss Army knife or whatnot, but you're gonna wanna basically get this off and you wanna do it carefully. So what I always like to do is take a towel because it takes some force to pry this off. And when you do, if you don't have a backstop for it, it's just gonna go flying. And if you lose this, you're not gonna be able to put your unit back together. So let's just move the frame out of the way. Let's do a towel here. And your hands are going to get messy with this job. Okay, so I did that and my thumb actually caught it. So I, what I ended up doing was using my fingernail on one side, the pick on the other to actually do the prying, and I used my thumb as the backstop. But definitely keep a towel handy. It always uh, stops it from sliding if it does shoot off of your thumb. So there's the E-clip. We're going to set that aside. Now what we're going to do is you can lift this piston up and just kind of work it out sideways actually we'll just leave it in for the time being and keep in mind the orientation is it it's indented on this side and then it's proud or raised up on that side when we put it all back together the proud side goes down indented side goes up so with that 
Uh, we can now take this E-clip off of the gear right here, the next E-clip. And let's do the same thing. I'm going to try to use my fingernail and the clip in the same manner. If I can, hard to do this on camera while I'm standing above it. Okay. There we go. So with that E-clip removed, that's a larger E-clip, so you won't get them mixed up. Now you can turn that gear so it's out of the way of this, this little stud here, remove the gear. Then you can pull, let's see here. Yep. Pull this piston out gently. And now what I found is that this uh, O-ring here is just lacking lubrication. And on the inside here, I've already cleaned this out um, and I need to relube it here, but on the inside, you're gonna wanna clean it out with a Q-tip. Um, you can use like some denatured alcohol or carburetor cleaner. I wouldn't spray it in there, I'd just spray the Q-tip a little bit. And try to clean this out the best you can from all of the old um, oil that might have any metal shavings or anything on it. And then with that done, also just clean up anything else that you see. We're just gonna apply all brand new grease here and so you can see that's just a rubber rubber seal there. All right, so the grease I'm gonna use is just what I happen to have on hand here, and it's just a multi-purpose grease, nothing special about it. And then the next step is personal preference. I recommend putting on some latex gloves just because this grease is going to get everywhere. And now the fun part. So we'll put a little bit on our finger here. And we're going to grease up the outside of this piston here. I'm not going to put any on the face of the piston because inside of there it's got to push the air, uh, it's hard to see, through that hole. It's got to push the air through there. So I don't want any grease uh, getting and blocking that hole. And then we're going to kind of have the same problem and have to tear this thing apart again. So just around the edges. And once that's done, we are going to slide the piston back in. And remember the proud side goes down, the indented side is up. We gotta go in kind of on an angle. There we go. And we're all set with that part. Now I do put a little bit of grease on the gears. Not too much. Just a little bit here and there. You can actually spin the gear while you keep your finger on it. There you go. Gets a little bit on there. I'm gonna put the big gear back on. Have it slide down there, make sure the teeth align. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary to put too much more grease on the teeth here, but you do you. All right, so now I'm gonna remove this glove at least. And we're gonna put an E-clip back on. Lined up there. I'm going to take the take one of the notches in the screwdriver and just use that to push it on there like that. Turn that gear till the piston can go on it like that. Take the other E clip, and there is a groove on that um, on the shaft here. See that groove for the E clip. Make sure the E-clip goes in that groove. Same thing, once I get it aligned, I'll just take one of these little, the valleys in the screwdriver there, push that back on. There we go. And that's all set. So now as you see, it slides and it is perfectly lubricated. 
Now air won't be leaking by those seals and it will all go through the check valve and into your tire or whatever you are trying to inflate. Now let's put it back together. Okay, to put it back together, again, I take the left side and I lay it down. I'm now going to put this back approximately where it's supposed to go. There's a spot right here that's cut out and that rides right along here. This right here slides down into that. So just like this. And then this has little notches in the frame that align with the black part here and make sure that like that yellow notch goes into the black where it's supposed to go. This gets pushed down. You can put the um, ends here for the battery. Just slide that back in where it's supposed to go. Then we take the uh, trigger here and there's the little switch here. Trigger goes back on like this. So if you were to push it, it would click. And now we are going to line it up with this stud here and this stud here. So these two, and it's gonna be a little hard to show here. But just like that. Now we put this back together gently and the main thing you got to worry about is if I can flip this um, inside of here these wires right here the uh, black and the red one they have to be behind this yellow plate so just kind of gently with your finger tuck those back in and once they are laying behind it nicely like that And this should go together fairly easy. All right, everything is lined up. Nothing is sticking out more than it should. So now all you have to do is simply put the uh, 10 screws back in all of the holes and you will be back in business and this thing should work just great for you. Hope this helps you out. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and um, take it easy guys. Thanks for the view.